Hi, good morning, or good afternoon rather. Uh, I'm Harrison, and today I'm going to be talking about strategy and technology of platform engineering and how we've actually implemented this for our customers at Fujitsu. So I'll give you a quick run through of the agenda. So I'll give you an introduction of myself, where I work and what I actually do in my role at Fujitsu. Uh, then I'll talk about the problem that platform engineering solves and how best we can implement platform engineering to solve that problem for our customers. Um, I'll, I'll give a quick introduction of what platform engineering is, just for anyone that's, that's not aware. And I'll talk about how Fujitsu has implemented this uh, solution for our customers and the benefits and challenges that it'll bring and then I'll move on to the roadmap of where we're going to go next with platform engineering. So I'm Harrison, that's me. Um, I'm a lead engineer at Fujitsu based in the UK and uh, this is my second year at reInvent but first time speaking so uh, please go easy on me. <laughs> um, but I sit within an R&D innovation space uh, within a European region for Fujitsu. So we get to work with exciting and new technologies where we bring them into the organization and try and use them in a way that might not have been done before, but where we can do that to solve complex problems for ourselves and for our customers. So what are we actually trying to solve? So let's, let's paint a picture. Let's say you're starting a new project or you're starting with a new customer and you're going to more often than not start with a blank canvas. So let's say we want to start building a, an application for the cloud. So we might start looking at, right, well, we need an AWS account. And best practice is we should have organizations in there. We might vend it through Control Tower. And we might start securing it with guardrails as well. So then we might start storing our data within the cloud. So we might store it in S3, for example. Then we might start looking at how we're going to access that data. So we might use serverless technologies like Lambda, and we can go and retrieve information from our S3 bucket that we made. But Lambda, of course, needs some permissions to access our S3 bucket. So we're going to have IAM uh, introduced as well. And over time, you can see that just for interacting with some data in the cloud, we've already got quite a complex setup already. And that's just a very basic implementation. So over time, it's starting to grow, and it's going to become more and more complex. And that's just going to be unmanageable. So we need to start thinking about what, what principles we need to start introducing so that we can start managing a complex estate like that, but how we can do so that's not just in AWS as well. So if you start looking at other industry tools that are outside the AWS cloud, but we might use in conjunction with, we might start looking at other development tools, and that's just a nightmare to look at, never mind managing that. So over time, we've started looking at Right, let's, let's start abstract, abstracting our tooling into different, different pieces so we can start managing them on a, on a low level basis. But that abstraction has started to lead to complexity because now you need a more wide range knowledge in order to start managing all of that. And because that complexity then leads to chaos and that's why it's so unmanageable to, to keep going like that. So this, this reduces our cognitive load on our engineers and it reduces the, the quality and, and efficiency of those teams. So this is where platform engineering comes in. Platform engineering can help solve all of those problems from before, and we want to start accelerating our teams. So what is platform engineering? Good question. Uh, that's where we start looking at introducing uh, automation into our downstream development teams to uh, uh, improve the cognitive load and to start making them more efficient. So the qualities around platform engineering, We've got focus. Our engineers can start focusing on the value that they're going to give to our customers rather than the mundane, trivial tasks that they have to do each time they start a new project. Accelerated development. Because they've now had the access to a self-service infrastructure catalog, they can now start accelerating their performance and, and quicker time to deliver it. We can start introducing patterns of golden paths, uh, and they can be cost optimized from the ground up. So we can reduce that that load for the engineers, and we can manage that for them instead. And finally, time. It all comes down to time. We can reduce our time for delivery. That means we've got faster and better engineering teams. We've also got a, a, an improved relationship with our customers because we're actually delivering on a shorter time scale. The components of platform engineering, what actually makes a good platform? Well, we need a self-service developer portal where our engineers can go, they can request AWS accounts, they can go and request infrastructure within the AWS cloud. But let's start implementing the best practices. So the infrastructure and accounts that we start vending need to be managed by infrastructure as code. Everything should be reusable. If we can make everything in a reusable modular format, they can start reusing the components within their own teams outside of the platform team. 
let's start baking in the monitoring tools. If we're vending an EC2, for example, we should put agents on there that can start monitoring that EC2 instance for them and reduce that, that responsibility load for our engineers. And we need to look at how we're going to integrate identity. Can we integrate that directly into our organization's policies? Can we start looking at whether that's third party software or we can start uh, looking at Cognito, for example, and managing access to the platform and the infrastructure that the platform vents? Principles, we know what we need to build, but how should we build them? So scalable, we don't know if a project's gonna come in tomorrow and we wanna be able to support our engineering teams if that case arises. So it needs to be scalable on demand, it needs to be secure. There's no point doing this if it's not secure from the ground up and the infrastructure that we vend needs to be secure as well. Again, it needs to be modular and standardized so that we can start enforcing patterns across our organization from the platform team. Everything needs to be automated. If it's not automated, they're not gonna have that reduced time to delivery. So automation needs to be baked in where the platform team can benefit from that, but also your downstream engineering teams as well. It needs to be continuously improved. Demand changes over time. Customer needs change over time. We need to be able to add and, and improve this platform over time based on trends. And the best way to do that is collaboration. We can get our organization engineering teams to be able to contribute to this platform. So they could say, well, this, this case keeps rising up for customers. Let's get that baked into the platform so an, another engineering team can take advantage of that pattern. But why is it important? We know what we need to do, but why should we do it? Well, Gartner predicts that by 2026, 80% of large organizations will use platform engineering and will have internal platform teams to manage this workload. But what does that look like in, in practice? Well, the platform team will start looking at building the platform. At that point, our engineering team can start using that platform to build and automate that complex infrastructure. But that platform itself goes back to the components from before. So we need the self-service developer portal, we need the developer tooling, needs to be secure, reusable, and we should start looking at the golden paths. What's the best way that we can deploy infrastructure within AWS? The Dora report says if we use DevOps correctly, elite performance of DevOps can increase acceleration up to 40%. So that's a major, major figure and a good, good reason why you should look at doing platform engineering within your organizations. But what does that look like? How can you actually implement platform engineering into your organization for your customers? Well, you can look at open source. So at AWS and HashiCorp have released Account Factory for Terraform, and we can use this to vend AWS, uh, AWS accounts within our organization, store them in a source control provider, and uh, automate the guardrails and securing them to our organization's policies as well. But up until now, I've told you what platform engineering is and how you can uh, implement it using open source technologies. So you're probably thinking, I've heard this talk before, this is not telling me anything new, and this is where I'm gonna try and break that barrier. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you how you can introduce diversity and differentiation into your platforms so you can stand out to your customers. And one way of doing that is looking at the other uh, considerations that you need to think about. So how are you gonna manage your secret estate? There's gonna be a lot of secrets because we're building auto, uh, infrastructure that's automated. We need to start storing credentials to our applications and the infrastructure that we have vended. We need to look at how we can introduce CICD. If we've given a customer a uh, the ability to vend an EC2, we need them to be able to maintain that EC2. So let's give them a pipeline that, because we're using infrastructure as code, can re rebuild that infrastructure for them automatically. And we need to go back to that identity. We need to incorporate the identity back into the platform so that we can link it with our organization. So it's one password, one access straight away. And these are the tools that we actually use in Fujitsu, and this is what we give to our customers. So we use ha uh, HashiCorp Vault for our secret management. We've got automation around that that links into GitLab. GitLab, we store all of our source control, the source control for any infrastructure that we vend for our engineering teams straight into GitLab with the pipelines that link them. And we use Okta for identity management. We've been able to link this into our organization and we can use this to secure the infrastructure that we vend as well as the platform itself so we can have single sign-on into HashiCorp Vault and GitLab at the same time, all through Okta as well. This is our implementation. So we did actually take that uh, account factor for Terraform platform that AWS have given. Uh, it's open source and we've taken that and built upon that to suit our customers and the needs for our engineering teams. 
So we've got a lot of infrastructure, which is all managed by Terraform, that's in a modular, repeatable format, so we can give this to different teams and different platform teams within our organization, so that we can build and maintain it and continuously improve that platform. We've given the ability to accelerate DevOps. We've got the ability to vend all of those interest tools, Vault, GitLab, Harbor, SonarCube, Adabrex, and Ansible. Um, we have the ability that, that, that makes these clusters for each deployment, so our engineering teams can actually say, right, I, I need a new source control provider. Let me build a GitLab uh, and, and link that to Harbor, for example, so we can build our application straight from our cluster that's not linked to any other project straight away. That developer portal that we came to before, this is the implementation of that portal that we've given for our customers. Straight away, you can see the ability to vend AWS accounts, uh, but then also the infrastructure as well around those accounts. More recently, we've been able to expand our capability and start looking into how we can vend SageMaker models, fine tune them, and release them that they can start integrating them directly into their applications straight away. We've also given the ability to vend uh, bundle applications, whether you need a Python, Node.js, or .NET bundle app, this will go and build an application uh, in that chosen language, and it will build a three-tier app automatically via Terraform, store it in GitLab, that will vend the platform for you, and you can start iterating on a boilerplate template of an application in the language of your choice. That pipeline that I keep mentioning, DevSecOps, how can we actually implement that? So this is a pipeline that we've got for our customers. Engineers can use their local IDs and local tools to start iterating on a platform. They can use things like uh, Amazon Q developers and uh, Code Whisperer to start accelerating that development process. We can push that up to GitLab, where we'll have a CI pipeline that will take care of the, the code scanning and quality assurance of that code. We can then use Docker to build that and push that to Harbor, where we can use other tools like Customize and Helm to provision that infrastructure, in this case, onto Amazon EKS. We need to bake in that monitoring from before, so that's why we've got Datadog integrations into our applications that they can vend. What challenges have we actually faced with this implementation, though? This infrastructure catalog was not easy to maintain. How can we deploy infrastructure across AWS accounts in a secure and repeatable fashion? We need to be able to use that golden path technique. We need to be able to vend organization-approved infrastructure templates where the organization has a say in the best standard and, and way of deploying those. It needs to be central and secure. We need to be able to vend a new AWS account and say, I want infrastructure into that AWS account. We need to automate the monitoring integrations, and it needs to be expandable. How can we say, right, a new trend's come out or a new service on AWS has come out, we can build that in infrastructure as code, and we can add it straight into our catalog or into a customer's specific instance for their use case. Security was a big issue for us, and we've actually managed to uh, take care of that by enforcing cross-account governance using Control Tower. Uh, this, we, we monitor and, and aggregate any non-compliance that might come up in a customer's account, and then we can automate any remediations of that non-compliance as well. This takes care of a lot of the responsibility of our engineering teams, and the best way of implementing that was through automatic remediation. I have said time and time again, what are the benefits of this implementation though? I keep saying, oh, it will give benefits to you and your customers, but that doesn't really mean anything. So what will my customers benefit the most from? So at Fujitsu, we found that on average, our customers have actually saved 30 days when provisioning a new AWS account, up to $50,000 in, in resourcing and infrastructure costs and a 40% uh, accelerated developer performance because we have been able to implement platform engineering and DevOps. But these don't sound like big numbers. So this is actually per AWS account. You can save 30 days when provisioning a new tooling cluster and securing it and using infrastructure's code to vend it, and then you can start iterating on it. 30 days we've managed to save for that for our customers. The infrastructure and time of, of actually building those different clusters with tooling and standardization of uh, secret management and, and CI processes. So that's going to take time and, 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 and 30 days to do. So that's going to cost money. So we've managed to cut that down from a 30-day perspective all the way down into, I think it's about 45 minutes to vend this platform. And that saves 30 days and $50,000. So what's next for our platform? So our expandable catalog needs to be expanded upon. That's the whole point of the catalog. So we can start introducing more and more of those golden paths that we and our customers agree 
need to be implemented into the catalog so we can in integrate more organization approved templates. We can start looking at supporting a multi-cloud or even a hybrid environment for our customers. Not everybody's on AWS or not everyone's on AWS yet. So we can start accelerating that modernization process and start looking at how we can integrate hybrid environments into this platform at the same time. We need to start focusing on developer experience. This whole point is, is um, the whole point of this platform is to start supporting our engineering teams. So we need to start listening to them and say, what, what, what trips you up on a daily basis? How can we automate it? And how can we make your lives easier? But most importantly, at the minute, we're able to accelerate the development of AI using AI. So we can start looking at Code Whisperer, Amazon Q for developers, integrating that into our processes. And because we're actually now able to vend um, uh, 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 AI on AWS through infrastructure as code, we've given that capability to our customers at the same time. But most importantly for us at Fujitsu, we're going to be listening to our engineers and our customers. This whole platform is supposed to be accelerating our engineering teams and it's supposed to be making their lives easier. So who best to listen to other than our engineers? But at the same time, because we use this platform internally, we want to also make our lives easier for our customers. So that we're going to be listening to both our engineers and our customers. Thank you.